welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines happening now. In the News is brought to you by the T1D Exchange. Make your voice heard and drive research that matters. We have a lot to get through this week. Our top story, Medtronic's MiniMed 780G AID system gets FDA approval. This is for people aged 7 and older who have type 1 diabetes. Medtronic will be taking pre-orders beginning on May 15th. And if you are using the 770G, you will be eligible for free remote software upgrades. The 780G is already available in 105 countries. It's been out in Europe since 2020. The biggest difference from other systems is that it can automatically administer bolus correction insulin doses every five minutes. It will also adjust basal insulin, and the infusion set can be worn for seven days. The glucose target level can be set as low as 100. Lots more information in the show notes, as there is for every news story you'll hear. Just go to diabetes-connections.com and look for this episode. More good news for Medtronic. The FDA lifted the warning letter they sent to the company in December of 2021. The FDA says the resolution of the warning letter follows ongoing remediation actions from Medtronic and proactive action to continue to strengthen its quality systems. All regulatory restrictions associated with the warning letter have been resolved. The FDA has also approved Omnipod Go for people with type 2 who take daily injections of long-acting insulin. Insulin says Omnipod Go was designed to serve the more than 3 million people using basal insulin or transitioning to insulin therapy to treat their type 2 diabetes. Omnipod Go is a standalone system that provides a fixed rate of continuous rapid-acting insulin for 72 hours. It's tubeless and waterproof, just like a regular Omnipod, but it's offered in seven different pre-programmed daily rates, ranging from 10 to 40 units per day, and operates without the need for a handheld device to control the pod. It's been cleared for use with Novolog, Fiasp, Humalog, Admedlog, and Lumjev. Omnipod Go will launch in the U.S. sometime next year. Sensonics says the first pediatric study participant has received an ever since 365-day CGM insertion. The E3 180-day implantable CGM got FDA approval in February of last year. Sensonics says expanding to a pediatric population represents a priority for the company. They also intend to use the study data to submit for an integrated CGM or ICGM designation later this year. Sensonics holds an FDA investigational device exemption to expand the trial to pediatric patients. These patients are between 14 and 18 years old. Baxime gets a new home. Amphistar Pharmaceuticals is buying the glucagon nasal spray from Lilly in a deal worth more than $1 billion. You may remember that Lilly had acquired Baxime from Losemia Solutions in 2015. The FDA recently cleared a new experimental drug for type 1 to start a phase 2 clinical trial. This would be to address low blood sugar at night. We've talked about this before. Zucara Therapeutics is testing an oral medication currently known as ZT01, and it will attempt to restore the body's natural ability to respond to low blood sugar levels. This phase 2 trial follows positive results from the company's earlier small phase 1 study. 18 participants who received the treatment Of those 18, 16 had a meaningful increase of glucagon production with no serious health events during the trial. Right back to the news in just a moment. But first, let me tell you about the T1D Exchange. The T1D Exchange is a research study conducted online designed to foster innovation and improve the lives of people with T1D. Your information stays confidential. Your participation is fully voluntary. But this is so valuable for the community because you complete surveys, you can sign up for studies. We've talked about news items that include information found by the T1D Exchange. This is all about improving knowledge, accelerating the discovery and development of new treatments and technology, and generating evidence to support policy or insurance changes. Please check it out. Go to the link on the homepage or t1dexchange.org slash Stacey. That's t1dexchange.org slash S-T-A-C-E-Y. Australian scientists have designed a new way to swallow insulin in a pill form. Long way to go here, but the design has potential uses for delivering other protein drugs, such as antibiotics and cancer treatments. You probably know insulin is made up of smaller versions of proteins called peptides, and previous attempts to develop oral insulin 
have found that the severe pH levels in the gastrointestinal tract degrade the peptides, causing the drug to lose its function. These scientists encapsulated the insulin in a lipid-based nanomaterial. In animal studies, long-acting insulin was absorbed better than fast-acting. So as I said, long way to go, but an interesting start. Checking in on non-invasive glucose monitoring, a proof-of-principle study demonstrates the accuracy of No Labs proprietary BioArfid sensor. They say this is an essential step toward achieving their goal of delivering the first FDA-cleared, truly non-invasive glucose monitoring device to the market. This study did not include people, but researchers say it's an important step on their way. We will keep watching and waiting. I have some news of my own. Diabetes Connections presents Mom's Night Out is expanding. We had our first Mom's Night Out earlier this year, and I'm still over the moon about how well it went. And we decided, after a lot of thinking it over, to expand. So I have announced on social media, and you'll be hearing more about it, we have three cities. We're going to be going to Providence, Rhode Island, and Frisco, Texas, the Dallas-Fort Worth area in October. And we'll be back in Charlotte, North Carolina in February. Go to diabetes-connections.com, click on the events tab, and you will see the information. Sign up for those specific email lists. You'll see the information. You'll be able to sign up for updates to learn more about each individual city. And I got to tell you, this is just the beginning. I have big plans for this event, more cities to come in 2024. I am so excited about this. On the podcast next week, checking in with Dexcom's Jake Leach. There was a big move by Medicare in the United States to give more coverage to people with type 2 diabetes to cover CGMs in a more robust way. We're going to talk about that. And of course, we're going to check in on G7. There have been some updates, and apparently there are going to be more in the U.S. So Jake Leach will weigh in on that. And our last show, if you missed it, was with Pietro Marsala. He is the first U.S. commercial pilot with type 1. What a great guy. I've gotten some incredible feedback from that interview, especially from parents whose kids want to be pilots, and they were told no. And they didn't realize the rules had changed. Those are some amazing emails to get. And I know Pietro is happy to share his story. You can find that episode right where you found this one. And please share it. That's a great episode to share not only with your friends with diabetes, but with friends who just may be interested, you know, as milestones are set and barriers are broken. And that is In the News for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.